Barra catching. A high drive. That's trouble. And Yogi Berra self run high over the screen and into Bedford Avenue. It ain't over till it's over. 90% of this game is half another. When you come to the fork in the road, take it. It's deja vu all over again. And the Yankees are champions. And look at Barrow. Piggyback riding Bob Cazala. Yogi Berra, a three-time MVP, 18-time All-Star, and 10-time world champion, passed away last night at the age of 90. He died peacefully at his home in New Jersey with his family. Barra, of course, played his entire career with the New York Yankees, except for four games with the Mets in 1965. And his name appears just as often in famous quotations with his yogiisms that we all love as it does in record books. Skip, how will you remember Yogi Berra? Stephen A., I know you're a longtime Yankee fan. But I'm older than you. And I think I followed closely your Yankees before your time. And I'm going to tell you that my one great regret about the life and times of Yogi Berra is that several generations, including this one, came to know him only for those malaprops we just heard, those yogiisms, if you will, instead of as the all-time great New York Yankee catcher and feared, feared postseason clutch hitter that was the real Yogi Berra. I had the privilege of interviewing him a couple times, one time in particular at length. He was extremely uncomfortable trying to be a comedian because it did not come naturally to him. These lines, these malaprops just spilled naturally out of his mouth. I think later in his life he had some comedy writers for him who might have helped him with a couple of new ones. But he became a living legend in his later years, almost if I can throw this out, as, as a cartoon character. And by the way, he had a real cartoon character, if you remember Yogi Bear, yeah. named after him Yogi Bear. And it came to that for this man. And then as Molly pointed out, he won 10 rings. He holds all kinds of, I don't have time to go through all of his Ten. World Series records that he holds. In Stephen A., he won three MVPs, not one or two, but three. And he finished in the top four in the voting four other times. So that's seven years of his career in which he was a factor to be the best player in all of baseball. You might not remember this, but on opening day about three years ago of the baseball season, we did our show from the Hard Rock Cafe in New York City. Yeah, I remember. And we tailored our show around obviously a lot of baseball and especially because we were near Yankee Stadium a lot of Yankee baseball so we did a, a debate top five all-time Yankees and you were so upset with me because I included Yogi Berra as my fifth in the top five mm -hmm. with obviously Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, mm -hmm. DiMaggio, Mantle, Yogi and I excluded your guy Derek Jeter and mm -hmm. you said how can you do that and then we had the former Mayor Giuliani come on later, who's a longtime Yankee fan, and he sided with me and tried to sort of, not lecture you, but, but bring you up to speed on, hey, th this guy was really, really great. And it gets lost in the fact that he's yogiisms. Mm -hmm. Oh, tell me another funny line. I'm not going to even read any of them because I don't want to distract our younger audience from the fact right now this was as feared a clutch hitter in his time as there was. And he stood about 5'7 and weighed 185 pounds. Squat little catcher. He, he looked and sounded like a New York guy, but he grew up in St. Louis. Just, just kind of an odd little character who could really, really change the baseball games that he played in for your New York Yankees. It's interesting that you bring that up, Skip Bayless, because when I'm giving my speeches on the lecture circuit, I often say to folks, I'm brilliant because I know I'm not. I learn from those who are. And the fact of the matter is, is that when you said what you said about Yogi Berra and former Mayor Rudolph Giuliani came on our show and echoed your sentiments, the reality is, is that I was ignorant. I didn't know. Um, when you hear stuff about Yogi Berra, I'm just reading stuff like now, 46 to 19, 1946 to 1985, he appeared in 21 mm -hmm. World Series. And 17 as is, a, also as a coach and manager. As a coach and manager. Yeah, yeah. 
All right. That's you that's know, staggering the, 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 the to me. 21 years, World Series. 17 year period wow. with the New York Yankees, 14 times. 14 times they won the American League pennant. When you look at that and some of the numbers that come associated with them, what is it, 358 home runs, drove in 1,430 runs, 1957 through 1959, won 148 consecutive games behind the plate without one error, which is just phenomenal. It was a Major League, mm -hmm. Major League Baseball record at the time. For me personally, being due to the fact that I never saw Yogi Berra play, I just saw the highlights because I was born in 1967, yep. so I never saw him play. I do remember him managing. I do remember him finishing in third place as a manager for the New York Yankees. I do remember George Steinbrenner guaranteeing him that he would be, he would stay on as the manager even if they started off slow because you don't just get rid of Yogi Berra. But then after a slow start, that following year, I believe it was 84, 85, mm -hmm. 85. Yogi Berra started off slow. They 16 were in last games. place, 16 games in. George Steinbrenner goes back on his word and, and fired and, him. And didn't and fire him to his face. He sent Clyde King, he the said GM. Clyde down. King, yeah. the general manager, to give Jogi Berra the news. <laughs> and I remember saying to myself as a kid, who the hell does he think he is? You know, you're in last place. Mm -hmm. what you, what, 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 what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. But when you grow up and get wisdom attached to you and realize that your word has to mean something, I still don't knock Steinbrenner for firing him. But if you have to go back on your word, we'll get on DeAndre Jordan in the modern day era for the Clippers for going back on his word to the Dallas Mavericks. We'll get on other guys for making their mistakes. Then that means we can't give the late George Steinbrenner, God rest his soul, a pass. Clyde King should have never went to Yogi Berra's office. That should have been George Steinbrenner. George Steinbrenner should have held that press conference and said, I went back on my word and I apologize for that. I have to do this. George Steinbrenner should have been man enough to address Yogi Berra with the deference and the respect that he deserves because of all of his years of, 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 of labor to the New York Yankees. And the fact that George Steinbrenner didn't do that obviously was something that resonated with Yogi Berra to the point where Yogi Berra, to my knowledge, didn't speak against him. He just wouldn't show up. He wouldn't show up to be honored. He wouldn't show up to Monument Park and, and receive any platitudes or anything like that. And um, ultimately, they mended fences years later, which obviously was the great thing to do because he should always be celebrated as one of the all-time great Yankees for his contributions to the franchise. Uh, but more importantly, I respect him for clearly the honorable man that he proved to be. He didn't have to say anything, mm. and he didn't. He just sat up there and said, I don't even think that he was mad for being fired. I think he was mad that George Stein went correct. back it on his word. It was the principle word. of it. It was the yep, principle of his word. And so, you know, this was the 80s, and it's a little more than 20 years later, th you know, close to 30 years. Um, and principle is not something that we hear too much about. Mm -hmm. But Yogi Berra wasn't just a great Yankee. He wasn't just a winner. He wasn't just an all-star and a three-time league MVP and a guy that was inducted into Baseball's Hall of Fame in 1972, I believe. He was a guy that was of incredible and immense principle. And I think on a day like today, that's what you got to remember about him just as much as anything. I agree. And allow me to drive home my original point by pointing out another reason I was so offended that he became this sort of clownish persona yep. in later years. As a catcher, he was known as a savant calling pitches for yes, pitchers was. and caught the one perfect game, as you remember, in the World Series, Don Larson's 1956 mm -hmm. game five. Yeah. And he validated his brilliance by as managing the Mets. Do you remember this? Took them to the World Series. All the way to the World Series to, to, to play the Oakland A's mm -hmm. that were just about invincible at that point. Yeah. He validated that this man had baseball brilliance about him. But but kids today just know, oh, the the funny little guy, the, the yogiism. Yeah. Really? Skip to that. I grew up watching Yankees games with my dad. He he's he's a diehard all New York fan. And I wasn't aware of any of this, speaking for the millennials. I knew the yogiisms, I knew the name, but in terms of the prowess that you're talking about and, and the eighteen time all star, so I appreciate both of you guys sharing that. Yeah. God bless him. God bless him.